I, it's the the unspoken and the some often unseen uh, dialogue that doesn't take place. Yeah. I live in here, and I have a, a one room studio in this space. And I know it's a bachelor's. I know it's not intended to have a kitchen, but. If they aren't using this space here, can I put one in? It'll be portable. I'll take it out when I leave if I have to. That's great. And That's fantastic. Yeah. Very simple, basic kitchen. You know, artists always have like uh, creative spaces that they have to mm -hmm. figure out and manipulate in some way. And then um, they just have the one room. And so this has multiple functions and it's nice to have sometimes a place separate from your work yeah space. a sanctuary yeah yeah and um and there's it, it requires you to do different types of work like when i have to do work on the computer when i have to correspond to folks and and these pieces in this corner i describe as my object lessons and so huh. I would I would go and into my studio, I find certain things and I just want to sit with those particular objects for a little bit outside of the studio. Cause then they can be can live with them. focused on and live with. I've turned them around and, and changed out different objects and nothing is fixed. You know, a, a living environment you know, like those natural pieces, those found pieces. Um, I just can sit and look at that and that will inform me in all kinds of ways about the way I can work with something, the way I can appreciate that organic quality. I learned a tremendous amount about looking at nature and, and, and finding. Uh, this is one of the palm fronds off the tree out there oh, wow. and I had to do some gardening in, in, the, in the back and I was having to trim off all of these palm fronds and then I was looking at it and examining just the way in which those pieces are folded and and I, I had to think that had to be the first man I mean, we make these things now and, and we construct them out of paper and all kinds of things, but they pre-existed. Right. And, 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 and in, this, in this way, so I was just uh, trimming it down and so I trimmed it down into a fan size. This is actually a portion of the tree that I, I have in the Nomad and I just love the way in which the the sculptural aspects of how it grew. When did you um, find out that you were an artist? Wow, it's so early that I can't really comprehend a time I wasn't. My first conscious memory, as I think of it, um, was at the age of four. and. What surrounded that is I was born in Augsburg, Germany. My father was an officer in the army and was therefore able to take his family, um, at the time five children, to Germany. And then I was the first child born there. And we moved around a bit, uh, stayed there for four years. And so then he decided to leave the army and come back to the States. So that was my very first memory, is coming to the States. And we went there on a military transport ship. We came back on a military transport plane. Because it was so, so unusual and so exciting of an adventure, it triggered in me my first visual memory. Um, I don't have one of being in Germany. I don't have a real strong visual memory. I have a very tactile one. Um, but coming back, that's what I remember. Uh, 
and we we came back during the holidays and uh, we we had to fly through um, uh, areas of I think it was Nova Scotia or something like that and we had some stopovers and lots of snow quite beautiful and, and then coming to the States which for me was my first but because we were so considered such an unusual family, a black family, having then come from Europe and having had years of which we uh, had some acculturation to that place where we were, that was very unusual and to see such a large family in total coming back with then eight children. and. We were not taken too kindly <laughs> about that experience. So did, did you feel like exiles? You know, bit, like, not exiles, uh -huh. but like outcasts. Like returning, you know, outcasts? Although we were certainly um, connected to an expatriate community of black men, mostly. You know, in, in, in especially, Germany? Especially, you know, yeah. jazz musicians and, and such. My father was a real avid fan. Of, an affectionado for jazz, and and so we associated and kind of uh, had that same kind of feel because people didn't understand it. They didn't. All they knew about Germany was you know the reference to the war, and and the only thing they understood about its culture was that they were Nazis. So. We were kept sometimes at an arm's distance and didn't quite fit in. And for me, at such a young age, I was placed into school immediately, hopefully to get me more acculturated into the school. And so at the age of four, I went into kindergarten. But they felt that I couldn't quite understand I certainly didn't understand all of the kind of colloquialisms of the of the language. I was left alone in the class and I could hear them and I could and I was being able to figure out the different events and what was going on but I wasn't participating. But what they had in the classroom was all these materials and I got to work and while they were in the auditorium I spent the time singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I spent the time making out of old Goodwill bags, costumes. Now, I, I, I certainly couldn't tell you that I had this as a plan. It was more of a spontaneous reaction of a kid really wanting to participate, and a five-year-old at that. And all I wanted is I wanted to engage. To be included. I wanted to be included. And I realized in, in my five-year-old mind, this is my language. This is the power of art. And I couldn't even frame it as art. Mm -hmm. This was my language. This made, allowed me to communicate and allowed people to communicate back to me. And so I was connected to it just for that alone. How did your siblings take to your art? Out of the nine, five <laughs> are created. It was always stated, find something you're interested in and you've got you've to do it. But I can't, I don't have time to really go through that with you. So you have to be very independent and very self kind of contained and and, uh, and pursue it as a passion. If you want it, you've got to pursue it. I can't pursue it for you. That there were things that America didn't know and understand. And that being American had some limits. And what we knew is that we both lived inside and outside of that experience. Now, what happens to someone because in one, one way, we were coming back, just as we were in Germany, living almost like an immigrant family, where the older kids learned to be bilingual so that they could talk for the parents. 
and we lived on the economy as well as on base because they could not always accommodate uh, such a large family. We come back and we might as well be an immigrant family because they didn't know what to do with that experience. So what would you say that, um, how much of that experience that, you know, that your family went through informs your work today? Well, I think, number one, to, to feel, when you don't feel that you can express certain things through the language, that you go through other means. And art is a wonderful medium to become expressive in when basically whatever that dominant language is. Mm -hmm. So we in a sense had a second language, but we also had a third language in the language of art. And we learned how to express the, the frustrations that we had with being dual cultured um, in, in that way. And so I did it, is it, it was always something I could um, feel comfortable with, explore, uh, be in, in my imaginative world. And also, I was good at it. <laughs> I should say. <laughs> Even then, I was very good at it. And at first, um, people were a little bit concerned because I, I was not reading in the typical fashion that most children were developing their reading skills. And the teachers were concerned, but I was always, I always had books. And what they, they thought then, well maybe it's not that she isn't interested in reading, maybe she can. And so, so what most people didn't understand is, I went for the illustrated books, because I was learning illustrate through those books and I would look for the best and most dynamic and interesting illustrations and I would um, I would critique the book based upon those illustrations 